Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video we have three goals. First we want to make the score display correctly when the page initially loads. Then we want to make that score update whenever we cast votes. And finally we want to update the buttons to indicate our vote status. So if we voted already we want those buttons to be filled in. And if we have not voted we want them to remain just the outline. And we want that to update in real time. So the first one is easy. We're going to go into our views and the comics, let's see, where is it? Comics underscore show. And then we just have to find the spot wherever we are showing that. That's inside of the span where the ID is score. And right now it's doing 10 just by default, just because that was our placeholder. So instead, we're going to get that from the comic. So we just want to do percent equals comic dot upvotes dot length minus comic dot downvotes that length. And the way that works is it basically just says okay, subtract the down votes from the up votes and you get your final vote. Very simple, very straightforward. Next is to make the score on the page update whenever we cast votes. Because as of right now, the score just kind of stays the same. So in order to do that, we're done for now with comics show by the way. So in order to make that work, we're going to come into our public JS comics show. So up until now, we haven't been doing anything with the response from the server other than just console.logging it. So inside of our routes, the comics route, scroll down to the vote, wherever it is right here, we are responding at the bottom after we set the message and everything. We are responding with some JSON, but we're not actually doing anything with it on our front end. That is going to change. We're going to use that to update the score on the page. So in order to do this, we're going to create another helper function. Right now we have send vote. Down below there, I'm going to create something called handle score or handle vote, maybe. Const handle vote equals an arrow function. This is going to take two pieces of information, a new score and a code. And we're going to do a few things with that. So first, we're going to update the score. So score.inner text equals new score. I think we're already getting score, aren't we? Yeah, looks like we're not. So let's get score. Const score equals document element by ID. I think we called this score, but let's look back at the view to be sure. Uh, yeah, ID, span ID is score. So that's what that is. We're going to get that. And then we are setting the inner text of that. So anytime this function is called, we're going to set the inner text of that score div, or score span rather, to be the new score that is passed in. And what's going to happen, the reason we have code in here is because we're going to use that to update the look of the buttons, depending on whether they have voted or not voted. And then all we have to do is call this inside of our other functions. So what's happening is we're going to send the fetch request. This is inside of the send vote function. After we get the data, we're going to turn it into JSON, and then we are going to update the page. Instead of just console.log in the response, we can leave that. We can still console.log. It won't hurt. But we also want to handle vote res.score res.code. And that what this means is that we're going to have to update our um, the route in order to make this work. Because right now, our response does not have a score and a code. It just has a message. So inside of here, you'll remember, you'll see that our, our response just does messages. But we're going to update that so that it has a score and a code. We basically just have to go through here and figure out what we want everything to be. So instead of just setting the response.message, we're going to set the entirety of response. So response equals, and then we will put our curlies, where the message is still going to be upvote tallied, but we're also going to add on a code. And the code is going to be one. And the same is true for the next one here. Response equals message of that and code of negative one. And the reason I'm doing one and negative one is because one is going to be you have upvoted, negative one is going to be you have downvoted, and zero is going to be you have not voted. That's why I'm choosing those. You could use words, you could use upvoted and downvoted and not voted if you wanted to. 
I just chose to use numbers kind of arbitrarily. And then finally down here for the error, instead of it um, being an error one or something like that, response equals that full thing for the message is going to be error one, just like normal. And then the code is going to be ERR for error. That's kind of a standard error response. So and basically just do the same for all the rest of this. So response equals open close. And on this one, they have already upvoted and they're clicking upvote again. So code is going to be zero. Down here, if they've already voted down and they're clicking up, so code's going to be one. Response equals. Code is one. And then right here, we're doing the exact same thing. Code is error. Add my semicolon, stop those. And then down here in already downvoted, response equals, there's the message, the code. Let's see, this is they've already downvoted and they're upvoting, so now we want that to be one because they're voting it up. And this one, response equals, code is now going to be zero because they had downvoted previously and then they clicked down again. So we want to take it away. And then response equals, this is the error. All right, let's just try this. Let's see if it works. Now we have a message and we have a code, but the problem now, if we run this um, inside of here, we'll see that we are expecting a score. We are expecting a new score, but we are not yet sending that on our in our route. So we need to send that down at the bottom, and we're gonna do that immediately prior to sending. In other words, after all of this stuff has run, all right, I fixed all that indentation weirdness. So down here, immediately before sending, we want to update score. So we need to set response, oops, sorry, S-P-O-N-S-E dot score equal to, and now how are we going to get this? The exact same way we got it when we first loaded the page. Comic dot upvotes dot length minus comic dot downvotes dot length. And then finally, we're going to send that response back. So now that has been saved, and let's finally run this and see where I made typos, because I guarantee you I did. No daemon app.js. Get my running URL and port. Looks like it's running, so I didn't make any syntax errors. Oops, somebody has added a comic to this. Cool deal. That's fun. So one of y'all from the one of the people from the YouTube added this. That's awesome. So let's go ahead and log in. And let's upvote this guy's comic. Or girls or this person's comic. So right now it's set at one. So let's hit plus. Now it's at two. Let's hit minus. Now it's at zero. Let's take our minus away. It's back at one. Now it's at two. Now it's at nothing. So our voting is working. Let's look at the console so we can kind of just see this in real time. You can see the object that we are getting back has the code, the message, and the new score. So if I hit plus, message upvote tallied, code is one, score is two. Hit it again, code is now zero, score is one. Hit down, code is negative one, score is down to zero. Hit it again, code is zero. So you can see how the code represents our vote state, whether we have upvoted, downvoted, or not voted. And then it also includes the score. So this is just us querying our own little API. And the last thing we need to do is now that we've got this working, we need to change the look of these buttons, both when the page initially loads as well as whenever we click on the button. So back in GORM, let's go to 
the JavaScript, the comics underscore show dot JS. And inside of our handle vote, we're actually going to update the button colors inside of here. Update button colors. The vote button, let's be as specific as possible. So this is where we check the code. If code is equal to zero, do something. Else if code is equal to one, do something. Else if code is equal to a negative one, do something. Else, that's the error. And we're just going to console.log error and handle vote. All right, so if the code is zero, in other words, if we have not voted, what we're going to do is basically remove the um, classes that fill the button in and add the classes that make it just outlined. So upvote, what did upvote btn, is that what we called it? Yeah, upvote btn dot class list dot remove btn success. And we want to add upvote btn dot class list dot add btn outline success. And we want to do the exact same thing with the downvote button. Downvote btn. And we want that to be danger. So remove danger and add outline danger. So if the code is zero, remove those classes. If the code is one, that means we've upvoted. So we want the green button to be highlighted and the red button to be outlined. So if it's one, we're, I'm actually just going to copy this down here and update the classes. So we want to, if it is copied, we want to remove the outline success and we want to add the regular success. And we want to remove danger and add the outline danger because we want to make sure that's outlined. And the same, actually the inverse is true down here. If they've downloaded, we want to remove the success and add the outline success. And we want to remove outline, btn outline, and add the full danger. So let's save that and see if it works. These are just bootstrap classes in case you hadn't didn't remember that. Refresh, so I'm not logged in. Test, test, log in. Now let's see. Make this a bit smaller. So if I upvote, now that is green. If I click it again, now it's not. If I downvote, now it's red. If I click it again, now it's not. And I can do that either way. Oh, that didn't work. Something screwy is going on. So that is green. And if I click red, my code is still one. My score is zero, but my code is still one. So that's not a problem with my front end, that's a problem with my back end. So if I had already upvoted, so let's click that and it makes me upvote. If I've already upvoted and I click downvote, the score is zero as it should be, but the code should be negative one. So I need to fix that. Hopefully some of you caught that when I was doing it. So if I've already upvoted, let's find it, already upvoted, and I click down, then the code needs to be negative one, not one. If I've already upvoted and I click up, then it's zero, perfect. I'm just checking these again real quick. If I've already upvoted, if I've not already upvoted, I click up, it's one, I click down, it's minus one, good. So up is already upvoted, so it's either zero or negative one. If I've already downvoted, it should be one and zero. Yes, because if I click up, it's going to switch it from negative one to one. And if I click down, it's just going to remove it. So that should solve that problem. Let's save, which will restart the server. I'm going to have to log in again. Test, test. This is why we test, by the way. It's super easy to make these kind of mistakes. So right now, I have downvoted from the looks of it because it said it's zero. So let's click downvote again. Now it's at one. Let's click it down, down to zero. Click up, oh, there it goes, now now's the, the test, click down, and it works. Perfect. And so this is working exactly like we want. There's one more small thing we need to fix. Right now, if I refresh this page, it's not highlighted, even though I have upvoted. 
So it looks to me that, oh, I've not voted on this, and I really liked this comic, so let me click upvote, and I'm actually removing my upvote that's already there. Fortunately, this is a pretty easy fix. It's going to be inside of the comicsshow.ejs. We're just going to add another conditional here. So I'm just going to copy this and put it right up here. And we're going to have to fix this. So if user and comic.upvotes.index of user.username is greater than or equal to zero. In other words, if the user exists, if the user is logged in, and they, their username is already in the upvotes array, do the button where it's just success. To move this up, else if just user do this, where it they, they is outlined. I'm going to do the same thing down here, so I'll just put it there. So if user and comic dot downvotes dot index of user dot username is greater than or equal to zero, do this where it is filled in. So I'm removing the outline from that one. Else if, and I'm just going to remove all that, else if just user. So this one's going to check first. If this is true, it'll do that and it'll stop running. But if that's not true, then it will check if just user, in other words, if the user is just logged in, then it'll check that. So let's save that. We shouldn't have to refresh since we only updated the template. So let's refresh now that I have upvoted and you can see that it is tallying my upvote. Let's downvote and refresh the page and it's still showing my downvote. Let's take it away and refresh the page and it's still showing that it's not voted. So there we go. And that is it for this video. The last thing we have to do, as always, shut our server down. Control C. Come on, you can do it. It's not closing. Thank you, Gorm. Let's refresh our terminal. Six and a half hours later. All right, I have refreshed the page, and hopefully it'll work now. Get status. There we go. Get add. I'm just going to add all and get commit handle votes and update button colors git push origin master and that's it in this video we did three major things we updated comics underscore show dot ejs to get the score from the database when it first loads and we also colored the buttons based on the user's vote we also created a handle vote function inside of our front end javascript to update the score and the colors whenever we vote and in order to enable this, we updated the vote route to return a code that gives the user's current vote state for the comic, whether it's plus one, minus one, or zero. And this is kind of a momentous occasion because this is honestly the last video where we're actually building things together. This is the last video where I'm going to show you how to add functionality to your application. There is one more video in the series, but it's just going to go over the final project and kind of give you some advice for going forward. So... That is it for this video and largely for this entire series. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks.